Hey y'all, Toad here. Well, as you've undoubtedly uh, heard by now, it would appear that uh, Christopher Dorner has uh, is no longer among the living. And uh, he went out in a rather dramatic fashion. Now, I, as I'm taping this, the uh, the confirmation <clears throat> of the remains have not has not been made. But we're going to go uh, right now with the assumption that it is, in fact, Chris Dorner. Now, there is a lot of questions circulating, you know, about what happened, led up to it, the ending and everything. And I have to admit, you know, I've got, I've got some questions myself, and, and a lot of them have to do with procedures. Um... This man was barricaded in a remote location. It looked to me like there was quite a bit of law enforcement uh, personnel and equipment on the scene. And uh, it went on for several hours. I mean, several. I mean, we're, pro we're, we're talking four or five hours before the cabin appeared to go up and smoke and uh well we'll get back to that in a second um probably the first thing is the comparisons that are being made out there to uh to waco of course and and ruby ridge and uh what what was the uh the oklahoma city bombers name i'll i'll annotate it i can't think of it right off the bat but first of all i don't think these are very accurate. Uh, the Branch Davidians and the Weaver family, to my knowledge, neither had been uh, suspected of any violent behavior. If I remember correctly, the Weavers were actually... Um, the whole thing started because of a bench warrant, because Mr. Weaver didn't show up for court on, on a firearms charge, and not a violent firearms charge. I believe it was a an alteration, uh, making sawed-off shotguns or something like that. Uh, now, I'm not excusing making sawed-off shotguns, but the bottom line is he wasn't... His his area wasn't approached uh, under any any circumstances, even remotely similar to what, uh, to what just happened in California. And and the, the Branch Davidians the same. There was there was a there was suspicion that there were illegal weapons, but there was no there was nothing like what uh, what the, the, our our California guy was um, was accused of. So you know to compare what happened at Big Bear to what happened at Waco or what happened at Ruby Ridge, I think does does the uh, the world an injustice. Certainly terrible when they're doing it in the media. There, there really is no, uh, no comparison there. As far as for the Oklahoma City bombing, um, probably the biggest difference there is that while your California shooter... Um, it was accused of some pretty heinous crimes. I mean, there's no doubt about it that when when Mr. Dorner allegedly uh, shot those police officers, he was committing, you know, allegedly committing a pretty heinous crime, as as was the Oklahoma City bombing perpetrators. But unlike what happened in Oklahoma City, Christopher Dorner had the opportunity more than once to murder civilians that were not connected with his quote-unquote manifesto, and he chose not to. Now, I'm not excusing Mr. Dorner's behavior. I'm just trying to understand and try and keep it real. I, I don't want to play this whole... I, I do not like this generalization thing because it, it it leaves information out. I think that's very important to understand this kind 
of incident and just whitewash it and and bury it in generalizations i think does an injustice to to the to the world to to the american public the american public deserves better media coverage than that so the behavior of timothy mcveigh and and christopher Dorner cannot be um they can't be compared the only comparison that you can make is that both of them one for sure as as a convicted murderer and the other an alleged murderer but the styles were completely different at least as far as the information goes which brings me back to no matter how bad a crime is that somebody's accused of Christopher Dorner was never indicted tried or convicted of any crime and when he held up in that cabin again we're assuming that you know what we're hearing is is basically true about who it is and he was surrounded by those uh, by law enforcement at some point in time law enforcement decided that his that ending the situation regardless of the outcome regardless of the injuries to not only the suspect but to to law enforcement that ending the situation was more important than containing the situation um, this wasn't a long siege a la Waco this was a, a, a purposeful decision to take a suspect whether it be by well it was by force I mean let's not gild the lily they they would they went into place and somebody was going to the situation was going to end that was the obvious intent um, if you haven't heard the videos the videos are out there the gun battle was pretty pretty impressive at this point in time I have not you know heard you know did mr. Dorner come out and attack and that's what led to the whole thing or was the cabin surrounded the situation isolated and the decision simply made to end it now if it was the latter if that cabin was surrounded if that scene was contained why hang on damn phone be right back you know always a phone you know <laughs> Anyway, where I was in that thought process was, I have to admit that it bothers me a little bit that uh, somebody somewheres made a decision to not only risk the life of all the police officers, but risk the life of the suspect to end the, the scenario. Um, you know, I've heard people say, hey, it could have got dark, he could have got away. You know, I also read where they had they had over 20 SWAT teams on call. Um, the video I saw, the live feeds on on on, on the different uh, cable news networks as well as uh, regular networks, they showed a pretty intense police presence. Um, I have to admit, it bothers me a little bit. Why did they storm this home? Why, what, what was so important that they felt that, that a standoff wasn't acceptable, that the, the man's life wasn't the standoff, wasn't worth the standoff, um, that the safety of a standoff wasn't worth it. Um, again, if you, if you hear the videos, the, uh, the gunfire was pretty intense. It's very clear that incendiary devices I'm assuming and what it's been reported is they were they were tear gas canisters of some sort I've actually used tear gas canisters yes is it true that a tear gas canister can start a fire yeah you're damn right it's true and the all the users of incendiary devices know it so if you throw something in that you know is likely to start a fire 
I mean, you stop and think about it. What, what, what did the police actually call them? They call them burners. They don't call them burners because they work by burning. They call them burners because they're likely to burn up anything they land on. As far as I'm concerned, again, keeping it real, when the police made that decision to storm that, that home, they did so for a reason. Now, some will say it was because they were afraid Mr. Dorner would get away, there would be, you know, he was, they, they, I mean, they've even called him Rambo in the news media. Give me a break. You seen the guy? Okay. Um, there's a lot of people who are speculating that the death of Christopher Dorner was predetermined when it became clear to the police that he was a cop killer. Now, do I think cop killers are okay? No, absolutely not. The problem is, Mr. Dorner was never, ever indicted. Never tried, never convicted, never sentenced. The only real way to look at it is he was an alleged cop murderer. Cop killer, if you will. At what point in time is it okay to decide to kill an American citizen because of what he is suspected of doing? I have to admit that bothers me a little bit. Now, if that, if that man had killed somebody other than policemen, would the same scenario have, would, would the same thing have happened would his would he, would he have made his end the met his end the same way i don't know i don't know was he an embar embarrassment to the police and they they didn't simply did not want him to be able to speak did they did they kill him to shut him up i don't know i don't know but because this kind of outcome was too easy to predict there's a lot of questions there's a lot of questions. You know, if he had been arrested, indicted, found guilty, and sentenced to death by firing squad or hanging, I would have no problem with this. I do not have a problem when a murderer is, is executed. I have no problem with that at all. I am a pro-death penalty kind of person. But I am not a pro-death penalty person for those who have not gone through due process, those who have not been given the civilized opportunity to go through due process. And in my, in my mind, I am not 100% sure that due to who Mr. Dorner allegedly killed, I'm not so sure that his right to due process wasn't decided in some police station somewhere.